Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played a couple of days back. Now this was Blitz and my opponent was much stronger rated than I am. Uh, my opponent was 2132 at that point of time. I was 2025, so at least 100 rating difference between the two of us, which is significant enough. And it was a 5 plus 0, which means 0 increments on the clock. Uh, you get 5 minutes for both the players. And my opponent started off with g3 there. I respond with c6. Open plays a bishop uh, to g2, and I go for d5. This is always uh, my plan to play c6 and d5, uh, then develop the bishop out, play pawn forward, develop the knight, uh, both the knights basically, then develop the bishop, castle maybe on the king side, or maybe you can put your queen onto c7 and then castle on the queen side. Either way, it's a nice setup, which can be done. Here my opponent plays uh, d4, and I respond with bishop to f5. Uh, trying to place my bishop on an ideal square, because if you place it on g4, it can be kicked away in the next move by placing just uh, h3, and then you will be just moving your piece again and again, which is a bad thing. In opening, you should be moving one piece only once, ideally, and then develop all your pieces, finish the, the, the development by castling, and then you take your game to the next level from there on. Here my opponent plays c4, asking for a pawn trade. I uh, didn't go for it. I played e6 myself so that I have a solid structure, uh, pawn structure in the center. And the bishop is out of this because my all my pawns are on light squares. It's important to keep my light square bishop out of the pawn chain because otherwise the, the piece remains uh, very inactive during the game. Uh, here my opponent plays knight to f3. And here I took on the knight. Uh, which generally is not the case what I do, but here my plan was after my open does take, I can give a check from the bishop and get my queen active as well, lining up on the king. Here open takes, and I just develop the bishop onto b4, giving a check. Now bishop comes on to d2, defending the check there, and I get my queen onto a5, lining up the battery towards the king. Here my open castles, allows bishop trade, open does take back with the knight, here I take a pawn, which I thought is a free pawn, I can take it. Opponent can get the rook here, trying to trap the queen, because I cannot take the pawn, and I cannot uh, go on to b3 as well. But the only square which helps is to take on the pawn on b2. So that's completely possible, and still uh, I would be able to survive with my queen. So queen does have an escape square, it's not getting trapped anytime soon. Here my opponent takes on the pawn, which now again, I can be in a hurry and take on the pawn with the queen, which will be bad because bishop will be hitting it. So I have to take it with the pawn. And now taking with which pawn is also important. Now if I take with the e pawn, uh, what happens is uh, I my king is in the center. But if I take with the c pawn, uh, the c file gets opened up for the rook or the queen, which can give a check. And my king will be in a lot of trouble very soon. So I took on with the e pawn because the e file is not opened up. So there's no direct threat happening from there on. So opponent tries to just exploit that weakness and plays uh, e4. So that now after I develop the knight, opponent can break open the center, which the opponent does by taking on the pawn. Again, I cannot take with the queen. Bishop is still lying and eyeing this d5 uh, square. So I have to take with the pawn. Here my opponent plays rook to e1, uh, just trying to make sure that I cannot castle now. Uh, because my knight will be not defended there. Uh, so I went with knight to c6, so that both the knights are now connected, and each they are just protecting each other. Also, uh, opponent cannot take the pawn with the bishop, because again, queen is defending it and the knight as well. Knight cannot move because of the pin, but queen can take, so opponent cannot take the center pawn too. Opponent goes for b4 now. The idea is simple, to push it to b5, remove the defender of the, uh, of the knight, from here and then pressurize the e7 square. I went with a, uh, a6 there, trying to make sure that if open does play for pawn forward, I can take with the pawn, so not an issue. Open does uh, go ahead with the attack and I take on the with the pawn. Open takes back with the rook. Again, now another pawn is hanging. And once that goes away, uh, the next problem is both my knights are connected once. So both the knights will, and uh, my knight on e7 is attacked twice after the pawn goes. So it will be tough to save the knight. Uh, I didn't want to go into that variation, so I thought of just defending the rook, uh, the pawn with the rook, so that now open cannot take. 
here the best move as per the computer is uh, bishop takes on d5 because i cannot take back first of all it attacks my queen as well it attacks my knight as well and uh, then i have to move uh, my queen away from there and suddenly opponent can take here and then again uh, my rook will also fall because after say i move my queen here what's the best move let's see uh, if opponent does take the best move is to get back the queen here so that you can defend the rook opponent can take here i can take back and suddenly if you see uh opponent can double up on the e uh, file there i can defend but then open can triple up and eventually win a material so that is the problem with this line so instead in the game uh i went with uh so opponent went with uh open played the knight to b3 uh opponent went with knight b3 didn't spot the move that open can take the pawn uh, but went with knight so that may be uh willing to trap the queen eventually uh and uh, get the knight active here as well on to c5 which will threaten again attacking further on the b7 pawn i castle here because now i my knight is guarded there's no such threats happening opponent comes on with the knight to c5 here i place my rook on to d8 uh just centralizing my rook so that now uh, my pawn is not being just babysit by my queen there i can simply move the queen as well open takes on the extra pawn there i take back open takes back with the knight and now rook to b8 uh, all the best moves were played here and if you see stockfish evaluation here uh, the game is in balance it's 0.0, .0. Uh, so if both the players per play perfectly from here as per uh, stockfish then this game can end up into a draw but here after i play rook to b8 open goes back with knight to uh, c5 which was the best move as well here i try to double up and attack the pawn on f2 by getting the rook on to b2 and open saves that with a good move because what queen uh, on uh, f3 does is attack a pawn as well and i have a last rank weakness as well so that can be exploited too so that was a good move by the opponent and i just thought that i'll play pawn forward so that at least i don't have a last rank weakness uh and then open plays a rook to a d1 defending the pawn so that it cannot be captured with the knight otherwise that was a possibility uh and then i thought of exceeding the rooks and making the game simplified open plays pawn forward making sure that op the king also has an escape square uh on to h2 here i take on the rook open takes back with the queen and now i went with queen to c4 uh the idea is to attack the pawn because it's only defended once with the queen and i can attack it twice opponent goes with a knight to b3 uh making sure that the pawn is now defended twice here i went with knight to f5 attacking the pawn further now it's attacked thrice so opponent had to just challenge my queen so bishop comes to f1 all these are very good moves from both the sides uh, attacking and trying to hang on to a center pawn trying to attack the center pawn multiple times and then when bishop was played i i was like wow man this opponent is playing so nice now i went with a uh, queen to a4 the idea was to pin the queen here uh, because once you're pinning the queen the, the knight will not be able to move as such and then you can take advantage of the fact and then maybe take a pawn here because you have two knights as well attacking the pawn opponent goes with queen uh, to b1 and here i take on the pawn open does take back and i take back with the queen again if you see the best moves arrow as well that was the same refutation which was supposed to be done uh, and that's what i did here and here my open plays uh, queen to f5 i went with knight to e5 making sure that i am in the vicinity of the king uh, maybe try and exchange the queen somehow and then i have a pass pawn which can be very, very deadly in the end game that's why if you see because of having the extra pawn the advantage is slightly now for the black side uh open plays bishop on to g2 maybe trying to pressurize the pawn further because if i now move the knight away open will have two attacks on the pawn and i will lose the pawn which is my advantage so instead i thought of first giving a check from d1 open moves and here i give a check with the knight uh yes my knight is defended so there's no problems opponent moves the king up on to h3 there and i place pawn forward so that my knight is uh, cannot be just simply kicked away from here otherwise uh, I, I i can now simply move my queen anywhere maybe just go to uh, f uh, g1 and then uh, threaten checkmate maybe grab another pawn and i'll be in some further serious advantage 
open gives a check i go up open and tries to repeat even i did but i knew that i had some uh, break of repetition from here i can uh, always play pawn forward if required uh, yes i lose another pawn but there will be no checkmating pattern because there's only one piece here there's no second piece uh, and there will be no checkmate anytime soon but here my opponent breaks that repetition by placing bishop on to f3 why did the opponent do so because the opponent was ahead on the clock 32 seconds against 23 and it was a blitz which was played very nicely till here by both the sides uh, here, my, uh, here I thought I'll just take a pawn which was hanging for free and give a check as well. So I take on the pawn, opponent now goes down. I come. Uh, I now put my queen onto d2 uh, so that I have a discover attack on the king once I move the knight. Uh, also defending the knight which was required. Here queen comes now to c8. I go up, opponent again repeats a couple of times but then the opponent takes the pawn. Uh, trying to make sure that the center pawn is not a threat at the end. Again, if you, you you must have a quick look always at the clock as well. 23 seconds versus 9 seconds. So I'm losing badly on time, uh, but it's a serious advantage. How? Because here comes knight to g4 uh, with a discovered check. Uh, opponent now goes to uh, uh, king, goes to f3. And now it's a sequence where I can checkmate in the next two moves. How? I just have to place my queen onto uh, f2. Open has only one square legal, legally because other squares are already covered. Uh, so open uh, can only go to uh, e4 here. Other squares uh, open cannot go. Open cannot take because knight defends. Open cannot take the knight because pawn defends. So everything is in control. Only open can go is to knight, uh, king to e4. And after that, uh, queen e3 is the checkmate. Controlling the diagonals and the straight line, of course, uh, and other squares too. So everything is controlled from there on. It's a checkmate in the next two moves. But as you see, uh, clock is a big problem in blitz. Uh, and I was six seconds on the clock. Open was 21 seconds. I was just trying to pre-move at times. So I just went with uh, queen to uh, h2 there. I don't know why, <laughs> because I didn't have time at all. Maybe it was my previous plan when the situation was different, but I just pre-moved it or maybe just played very quickly there. And that's why I lost this game because opponent takes uh, on to f7. I can move up. Opponent can give another check. Uh, then uh, another check. I try to save with a knight. I just keep moving and opponent all uh, finally lines up. Tries to repeat eventually, but then a check comes in and then I just move the pawn forward by mistake. Opponent takes. Uh, and there was mate in one, but I, I think I lost some time there. Yeah, time out. But it was some serious middle game there. Uh, both the players playing almost perfect moves. Uh, almost the best moves as per the Stockfish. I missed a mate in two, uh, which was, of course, saddening. You should be able to spot mate in twos at this level when you have crossed 2000 rating. But uh, time pressure is something which I think I should be able to handle better from there on. I, if I would have remained more calm in the, with the clock, given that six seconds were there, I would have uh, definitely won this game. But it was a good uh, sign for me. Uh, I, I enjoyed this game because I understand that position-wise I was strong. Maybe I didn't win on time. So that's fair enough. Sometimes those days will happen. And you get back, you play more chess, and you win some more games and get back your confidence if at all it takes a hit. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow with some interesting content and instructive as well at the same time. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.